it's Marcus. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to choose your IB subjects so that you really maximize your chances of getting into the university of your choice before you even start the IB. I feel that choosing the right subject is super important with whatever you want to do in your future. Whether you want to go off to university, whether you want to do a sort of foundation degree, or whether you want to go straight off to work since it will provide you with the skills and with the abilities that you need to both apply to university and to work in your future job. I also think that picking the right IB choices is really important, specifically for getting into university, since I have friends who are really set back by their IB choices, since they didn't really think about what subjects they should be picking before actually starting the IB. So I'm going to be breaking this video into four parts. So the first is uni requirements and everything surrounding what you need in terms of subjects to get into the unis that you want to go to. Then I'm going to be talking about the non-essential subjects, so the standard level subjects, the languages, and anything that isn't the most important subject you need to get in. Third, I'm going to be talking about what you should pick if you don't know what you want to study in uni and you don't know what you want to do in the future. And finally, I'm going to be going over whether you should be doing four hires or three hires since there are people who do choose to do four hires and it is a valid option for anyone who wishes to do so. So for section one with uni requirements, I think the first part of the uni requirements is figuring out what sort of area or courses you might be looking into for university. So for this, you would need to figure out what sort of things you are interested in and research what courses there are available for your interests. So for me, it was quite clear. I just wanted to do medicine. However, for someone who really loves space as well as physics, they might want to look into aerospatial engineering, or they might want to look into astrophysics, for example. So this is a decision that is extremely important and you really shouldn't rush into it. So I would recommend doing your research and figuring out where your interests lie and what sort of courses you would be most interested in. So the second part of the uni requirements section is looking at your area of study and figuring out the specific courses that are available in that area of study. So for example, if you want to really study something to do with biology and chemistry, there are so many courses out there which have a sort of biological or chemical component to them. So it is really important that you look through these different courses and establish which of these might be most interesting or just look through them and figure out which might appeal to you the most. So next is the actual university requirements. Once you have sort of decided on the main course you want to pick, what you can do is you can look on UCAS or you can look at other resources, such as for me, I looked on the Medic Portal, which is a really good medicine resource, or you can just look at the actual university pages. Here you will find the exact courses you want to do and the specific subjects that the courses require for you to apply to them. So for example, for medicine, I would need to have chemistry and biology at higher level. Then you should look at the different grades that different universities require for these certain subjects because universities can have a very wide range of requirements. LSE might ask for maths higher at a level 7, whereas another university might ask for maths higher at just at a level 5, for example. What you can do with this information is you can figure out what type of university you would want to be applying to given your specific skill set. You might be someone who is looking towards an Oxbridge application, or you might be looking towards universities with less harsh entry requirement or you might be looking at universities which give foundation courses and merely require you to just pass the IB. Once you have figured out which type of university you might be wanting to apply to then you can do the final step of the entry requirement stage which is the self-evaluation stage where you evaluate your academic performance in the past and how confident you feel in achieving those grades. So someone that wants to do chemical engineering and they really 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 want to apply to Oxford for chemical engineering but they know that they'll need to have a 7 in chemistry and a 7 in maths, but they only have B's or C's and GCSEs in those subjects. They would probably need to reevaluate their choice of applying to Oxbridge, since it would be very unlikely that they would get a 7 in both chemistry and maths higher level. Then they can look at universities with less harsh entry requirements, maybe ones which require chemistry only at standard level, which is much, much easier than chemistry at higher level, so that they can get a better grade in chemistry and they are more likely to get into the university. So on to section two, I'm going to be telling you how to pick your other subjects, which aren't really, really vital for your application. So universities typically only ask for one or two subjects in specific. This means you have a bunch of options, which is tough since many people don't really know what to pick. And sometimes they just pick things out of the blue and they end up really, really hating those subjects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you different criteria you can use to evaluate those different subjects and figure out whether they would be worth picking in the IB or not. 
So the first is how much you would realistically expect to get in that subject. I really, really, really suck at art. I would most likely get a two or a three in art. It would be unwise for me to go and pick art. Next, I would evaluate whether you enjoy that subject. So for me, I picked English literature over English language and literature, despite me knowing that English language and literature typically was easier. So I picked English literature because I knew that I preferred reading novels and poems over sort of the more language side of Lang and Lit. The third thing is the workload the subject will bring to you. So you don't want to be picking subjects that will massively increase your workload because in doing that, then you will just have more and more work and less time to focus on each subject. And since there are one or two subjects which are really important, such as for me, chemistry and biology, I wouldn't go and pick some other really, really tough subject that would significantly decrease the time that I would have to spend on chemistry and biology. This way, I could really focus on the most important subjects and make sure that I get those top grades for the subjects that I really need to get. So you can lower your workload in these non-essential subjects in many different ways. The first way is definitely with the languages, and specifically the language acquisition. So for me, I'm bilingual, and I could have picked Portuguese A as my second language. However, what this would have done is would have given me much more work than if I had picked another language at B level. So what I did is I picked Spanish B. And since Spanish and Portuguese are so similar, Spanish is a somewhat easy subject for me, and it has very little workload since it is at a B level. I have friends who did the same thing who aren't fluent in Portuguese yet are still very familiar with the language. So they picked Portuguese B so that they could really maximize their time spent doing other subjects. What you can also do is you can put these B subjects at a higher level. So do Spanish B higher, which many many people do. It will make sure that the total of your higher level grade is as high as it can be. The final criterion that I feel you need to take into account is how valuable Will the skills and information that you learn be in the future? So how much will you actually use that subject? Let me give you an example. I was debating over choosing geography over economics. I had already done geography in GCSE and it would have been a quite simple subject for me to do. However, since I knew that economics was far more pertinent in the world and I would likely be much more engaged in it and use it much more in the future, I chose economics over geography despite geography possibly giving me far less work to do. I feel that this is very relevant to many people because in the end, this is an education that you're getting and you really need to invest in yourself and in your future. So you should be picking subjects that you feel will really contribute to how successful you are in the future. So the third section is what you should do when you don't know what course or what area of study you want to do in the university. Here, there are several different strategies that you need to take. Firstly, you need to figure out what your points of interest are. So what subject are you the most interested in? Which subjects do you really enjoy? Then I would apply many of the same criteria that I talked about in the section before, where I would evaluate subjects based on how valuable they are, how enjoyable they are to me, and also how much they would contribute to my point total. I wouldn't think about the workload that subjects are bringing, since there aren't any subjects that you feel are really vital and that you need to focus on. I also feel that you should be picking subjects which you are most naturally skilled at. So for me, I would never go and pick art since I suck. But for someone who is really, really talented at something, for example, at sports, they might go and pick sports science because it's something that they are really good at and that might lead to something in the future. The next strategy you can use is to look into potential areas of study that you might be interested in the future. So if you are interested in sort of the sciences, then you could look at different courses in different areas of higher education are associated to the sciences. From here, you can look at different university course requirements and what subjects are sort of recurring between universities and between courses. An example of this might be someone who wants to do something to do with tech. They might see that maths is a very recurring subject in basically all of the courses associated to it. So with this information, you can choose subjects that apply to the greatest range and number of courses that you might potentially be interested in so that you don't shut any doors and so that you have a lot of things open. Finally, I'm going to be answering the question of whether you should be doing four hires. Now, four hires is tough, that is for sure. However, I started off and I did a whole year of doing four hires. And to be honest, it wasn't that different to now when I have three hires. Yet, it was a lot of work. And so for someone to pick four hires, you really, really, really need to have the will to do those four hires, 
interest in those four subjects, and you also have to have the time management skills to be able to juggle so many hours of work and assignments at once. This being said, doing four hires in the IB can be extremely beneficial because doing four hires gives you the advantage of being able to drop one whenever you may want. So I dropped maths after the first year since I knew that it wasn't going to apply to me when applying to med school. What this means is you can drop the subject if you aren't enjoying it as much or if you aren't performing as well as you want it to be. That way you can maybe even boost your grade a little bit. Doing four hires will also allow you to apply to a greater range of universities and to a greater range of courses. So with my starting four hires, I could have applied to LSE for economics. So my overall opinion in doing four hires is I would recommend doing four hires if you feel that you are really, really capable of doing them. Because four hires isn't for everybody. It is quite demanding yet it is much more fun. I would say only do four hires if you are really, really up to the challenge and if doing four hires will benefit you more than it will hinder you. So that's it for today. I hope I helped you choose your subjects for the IB or for the A-levels for that matter. And I'll see you next time. There's no stopping it now. There's no facing the heat. Can't fight it or drop it. Now I'm down on my knees. There's no stopping it, stopping it So hard to believe The adrenaline's buzzing I'm like a fire symphony